For the first topic of the video, I'm going to cheat a little bit and go back in time to late 2023 and talk about a topic that I hadn't heard about until a couple months after it was found. But it's a topic I was so excited to see and something that I think a lot of my viewers would be interested in too, despite it being from the lost music category. Now, music has always been one of those divisive genres where you either care about the lost music if it's from a band or artist you listen to, and if not, then you mostly don't. Even in the Lost Wave community, this seems to be the case. For as popular as those searches are within their own groups, rarely do they reach the status of everyone knows that, where the wider internet gets in on the search. Anyway, for me, I've talked a lot about pop punk related lost music before, like My Chemical Romance and Panic at the Disco. This found music actually has to do with the latter, though it's not Cricket and Clover. As far as I know, those songs are still long gone, and everyone has accepted the theory that John Walker, who claimed to have unearthed them, just said that for publicity. The lost songs I'm going to talk about here come from a much later point in the band's history, around the time of their fourth and fifth albums. For years, if you had gone on YouTube and looked up Panic Rarities, you could find a handful of leaked songs from this era, but fans knew that not all of them were uploaded. Most famously, there was one song that was accidentally played at a VIP party many years ago, which fans called Stuck in the Middle, and the low quality recording of it from there was all that we had. Well this was until last year like I said, when three new unreleased tracks made their way to YouTube. One called Tied to the Tracks, another called Little Secret, and finally was Stuck in the Middle, officially titled One This Time. The fans really went crazy over the release of these. I was happy to get one this time as well, after so many years, but unfortunately, there aren't a lot of details about how these were released. Under the upload for one this time, user Earworms After Dark said they were able to get this track from an anonymous source, who sold it to them, and then allowed them to release it in full. That's pretty mysterious, but if it wasn't for instances like this to begin with, we wouldn't have a lot of these leaked songs. And it really makes you wonder who exactly the sources are that can find this stuff. And while I was editing this segment, I came across a couple more rare tracks from Panic's fifth album. These were uploaded recently too. It seems like fans of the band have really been able to get their hands on more of these lost songs, but there are still some more desired missing tracks out there. The next one everyone wants is called Turn It Back Around, which also was sourced from a recording at a VIP party when it was accidentally put on another playlist. This next topic is quite an old one, because it's been known about in the community for a long time, and there's been an interest in getting it found for a long time. I'm pretty sure I had gotten many requests to cover this as far back as the Johnny Quasar stuff, for how closely it connects to it. But now I'll finally get to talk about it for how the search has finally been completed. While I was never a fan of the series, you might be from when it was airing on Nickelodeon, or maybe you just really like the movie that was made for it. This is about Barnyard that CGI comedy show about a bunch of farm animals and all the trouble they get into when humans aren't watching. It originated as a movie like I mentioned before, and released in theaters in 2006, and did so well that a spin-off series was made and aired on TV for a few years right after. But before the TV show and long before the movie, the project was given life all the way back in 1999 by DNA Productions for O Entertainment. This early version looks fairly similar to the final iteration they went with, the characters mostly look the same and it's still CGI, but since it was made such a long time before, it's not as polished and definitely looks a little old school. In this state, the project wasn't a movie or series, it wasn't even considered a pilot, as stated by the show's director, Todd Grimes, and rather it was simply a test pitch. So in the years that followed Barnyard's movie release, Bits and pieces from this 1999 test would make their way out to the public, like on teaser trailers for the movie and behind the scenes features. There were even some screenshots that were saved from an archived version of DNA's website, so we knew this stuff was out there and that it existed, we just didn't have that full pitch. But that would all change in January 2024 when user DJ LiveRock uploaded the pitch in its entirety after having obtained it from an eBay listing of all places. The listing is still available to be viewed, and it really makes you wonder what kinds of other lost media is just sitting out there waiting to be found like this. There is nothing about this tape or the auction that hides what it really is. It's as clear as day that this is the pitch, with concept art on the back of the box, and even text on the side that reads demo. I imagine this was one of the ways they would show the concept to potential clients, with the hopes that they would pick it up, send them a tape. 
and thank goodness the seller kept onto theirs, though it's not mentioned in the listing where they got it from. I don't think anyone has ever seen another tape like this, and as one of the first big finds of the year, it really got everyone looking forward to what could come next. Just like this topic, which is another one I'm really excited to talk about, because it's one that I didn't think I'd be covering so soon, but maybe that was only inevitable after all of the copies that were made of an allegedly rare script. Here's the story with this one. It takes us back to late last year. This is when a thread on the Lost Media Wiki forums informed users that a script had gone up on eBay for an unproduced Seinfeld episode called The Gun, but it's also known as The Bet. This one famously never went into production for the subject matter that it covered, and only exists in this script form. Nobody had seen the contents of this script before, but from the auction, a few of its inside pages could be seen, with a mention in the description that there were notes in the script from series veteran Larry Charles that could be read within the pages. So in this context, it's a very historical piece to the Seinfeld series. The only problem was the asking price of the script, which was $4,000. Everyone in the community felt like that was too high. Though at the same time, if this one did sell and its buyer did not scan it, it could be another several years or maybe a decade before another one shows up. For the next few months, it sat on eBay, with the price being lowered every so often. I kept tabs on it, just wondering if some fan was going to buy it or someone that really wanted it for their collection, but it seemed like even after a few price reductions, the $2,500 was still too much for people. I got a few DMs asking about any potential fundraisers or interest from other community members to get a hold of it, but I hadn't heard anything about that, and basically figured that I didn't think most people really cared enough to spend that much money on it. But eventually, to everyone's surprise, it did end up selling, with a best offer made on the $2,500 price. I was really surprised to see it go for that much after sitting there for so long without any more price reductions, and the countdown started as to if or when the buyer would scan their copy. This was a huge question regarding the search because we all knew that any full scan of the script would immediately ruin its potential market value, so nobody really expected it to show up. A while had passed without any news about it, so I figured we just weren't going to see it. However, the seller of that copy made a move that shocked everyone and is partially what led this to being found. Not long after that first copy sold for $2,500, I was informed that the same seller had another copy up, this time for $1,000, and that it was a homemade photocopy of the one they just sold. I checked and saw another one had been listed and also just sold a week or so prior. So it seems like the seller made a bunch of copies and was selling them at a cheaper price to continue the profit he made off of the original one he sold. But with more copies in circulation, that meant there was a greater chance that someone would get one and scan it. And only around a month after those freshly made copies were put up for sale, I was DM'd and informed that the script had been scanned in full to archive.org. Now we can read the entirety of the episode that we would have never seen otherwise. I'm really glad to have gotten this one found, and it's another example of a community effort that led to it resurfacing. Here's some international lost media for you guys which is a category I would still like to talk more about in the future. Actually, this topic in particular confused some of my viewers when I first talked about it not too long ago, for the fact that nobody really knew why it was being searched for. This is the story of the news program from Brazil that condemned Yu-Gi-Oh cards, referred to as the Cards of the Devil segment from Good Evening Brazil. While the topic isn't necessarily something that has gained mainstream lost media attention, I thought the thread about it in the Lost Media Wiki forums was interesting, and apparently, this is one of the most wanted pieces of Lost Media from within the Brazil Lost Media community. It's very famous there. Though in the context of this video, I guess this is mostly an update and not really a complete find. But then again, it's kind of more than an update, because a lot has been recovered, so I guess you could say it's partially found now. You can be the judge of how much of this you want to call a find, but I'm of the opinion that it's pretty huge not just for the visuals, but for the information that we've now obtained about the topic. Anyway, the story behind this piece of lost media is that back in the early 2000s when Yu-Gi-Oh! released in Brazil, a lot of people capitalized on the scare tactics of that era and a news program ran a report that talked about how bad the cards were, like being connected to the Yakuza or the Devil, and it sort of led to a lot of hysteria surrounding the game in Brazil. This news segment became very iconic and influential, which is surprising because for as popular as it became, Apparently it hadn't been seen since the time it aired in the early 2000s. The thread on the forums mentioned that copies of the broadcast circulated back in the day, 
and that there were claims that people currently owned copies, but there was no evidence to back that up and only one visual from the clip. But would you be surprised if I told you that most of the information in this thread is actually outdated and wrong? And that was only brought to my attention after one of my viewers named Alex informed me that the Brazil community had made huge progress with this search. In Brazil, there exist extensive archives for televised programs that can be retrieved for viewing. And in those archives, a copy of this segment exists. Users within the Brazil Lost Media community were able to obtain a copy from this resource. However, there is a rule that prevents video and audio content from this archive being shared publicly. But I was told that apparently showing photos is okay, so the community sent over some photos, and now we've got a good look at what the segment was kinda like. These photos show host Gilberto Barros and a bunch of kids with their cards being interviewed and showing them to the camera. There was even a Magic the Gathering card that can be seen in one screenshot. I know this isn't like the best news for the topic, but it's way more than we had before. Oh, and by the way, that one screenshot from the original thread was confirmed to be fake. So before these, we actually didn't have anything from the clip. So basically, we've confirmed that a copy exists and that some people have it, but we can't see the whole clip right now. But unfortunately, this does mean it'll still end up coming down to someone with a home recording to get the full segment released, since I don't think there's any way the Brazil Lost Media community could release that clip for us. Now, in talking about this topic, it'll probably still lead to some debate since no one has completely and officially come out to say yes, these are real, but given its context and what happened a few days after the fact, I don't see how these couldn't be real, and they make their way into this video for that reason. I made a video that talked about the uncensored Sailor Mouth clips that circulated a while ago, back when the news first broke, but basically someone had posted clips claiming to be from the infamous Sailor Mouth recording session for Spongebob, and debate ensued whether or not they were real. For those unaware, this topic relates to a Spongebob recording session where the voice actors swore in character and then had the swears beeped out in the actual episode, which was the whole joke of it. Tom Kenny and the other crew members have confirmed that tapes were real and existed, but the rumor had it that Nickelodeon buried them in their archives and would never let them release. Well, the clips that leaked caused a lot of debate like I said, and a lot of people were writing them off as AI, or just really convincing fakes that had been edited. I made a video specifically talking about this back when they were first posted, and told my interpretation of the story, having first heard them months prior to them being posted, and that they came from a work print of the episode. They were bits and pieces of leftover content from the episode within that work print, including these clips, and the structure of it all was so identical to other work prints, I couldn't see any reason for it to be fake, and the sources were trusted enough and knew their stuff. So I was convinced they were real, but it still left people to wonder for sure. And well, not too long after the initial drama of the whole thing, I was informed in the Lost Media Wiki Discord server that Paramount themselves took down the clips from archive.org, which is a pretty big move, as most companies won't go that far. I don't think they would have bothered going that far if the clips were fake. You can go on YouTube right now and find all kinds of fake clips of Spongebob characters swearing, and because they're not real, they're still up. I'm more convinced even more than I was before that these are real. So that would mean it's our first piece of found content from the Sailor Mouth recording session. Unfortunately, there's still no word on that tape Paul Tibbet mentioned in a Q&A session that he somehow had a recording of the full audio track intact on a VHS episode of the show. But with how crazy of a find even just these clips were, who knows what else could show up. This next topic is a small find, but it's something I talked about briefly in another video during a Naruto segment. So I think it would be good to conclude the search here. This is related to the infamous parental warning screen from 2008, which hadn't been seen since then. Back when the series was airing on Cartoon Network, for one episode specifically, they aired a little warning screen before the opening played, informing the viewers that there's mild violence in the program. This is in reference to one of the characters taking their heart out of their body. But needless to say, if you look up the topic on old forums, most people are confused why CN felt the need to include this at all, when the series is fairly violent on its own. But for a topic discussed as much as it was back in the day, it seemed as though nobody actually had a copy of the warning screen itself. Eventually this was brought up on the Lost Media Wiki forums, and we started talking about it, realizing that it wasn't available online, and no visuals seemed to exist. We knew it only aired once, and that the episode was somewhere in one of the filler arcs. Episode 140 was the one we believed it to be from, and the search began to try and find a copy. 
I did a little looking around, thinking it was just sitting on YouTube or some obscure website, but I could barely even find any recordings of episode 140 at all. Some other users were able to find copies of the episode, but they cut the warning at the beginning of it, and it just started with the opening. Eventually, there was a post on the thread of someone that got a screenshot of the warning, but not the actual clip from the episode. And at this point we were out of places to look for it. Without anything to lose, I decided to make a post on X talking about this, thinking maybe this would be like a community search, and someone with the episode would come forward with it. And that's exactly what happened. Not long after that post, I was informed by someone in a Cartoon Network archive server that a copy of the episode was on hand from an old encode of the show. In this clip, you can even see the old logo at the bottom corner from where it came from. Curiously, this same logo is in the screenshot that was previously posted as well. And just like that, we got ourselves the parental warning screen. It was a nice quick search that us Naruto fans were happy to find. I also want to mention this small update with another search, since it's not a huge find but a lot of viewers did enjoy following it. In another video from not too long ago, I ran into a contest from the 2020 Halloween season that involved some lost merchandise that hadn't been seen since the promotion was held. Back in 2020, General Mills ran a contest that was unlike anything they had ever done before and haven't done since. They hired a special effects artist to create busts of each monster serial character Booberry, Count Chocula, and Frankenberry, with each bust only having one unit made. But because the contest was held so long ago, and only one unit of each character was made, it raised the question of where these could have ended up, and if they still exist, because I certainly hadn't come across them before. Upon doing a little research, I didn't come up with any results of the winners having made posts about their prizes. And with rare limited items like these, it's unfortunate to think about the reality if something was to happen to them, or if they end up getting lost. Basically that's it, you'll never get another one. We see this constantly with the likes of lost plushes and action figures, but anyway for the busts, we got a nice update on one of the characters right after the video went up. Now in the video, I mentioned that I couldn't find any of the winners, but then was sent a picture of a winner posing with Frankenberry from around the time the contest ended, as I was actually editing the segment. I don't believe he was ever contacted about if he still owned it, but it was nice to get some kind of evidence that it was in the hands of a happy fan. But now as for the update, we did get news on Booberry, when a couple users on X, who were somehow familiar with the winner, told me that they believed he might have this one. A couple pictures later and I was able to confirm they were the original winner, and to this day, still own Booberry, who was dressed in a Christmas hat in this photo. This makes me really happy to know that he's such a focal point within the family. But that's where we stand on this search, with Count Chocula still being totally unaccounted for, and no word on if the winner of Frankenberry still has him either. Just like with most of these types of items, as awareness spreads, so does the likelihood that they'll resurface, even when time isn't necessarily on your side. And finally, arguably the biggest find of 2024 so far was something that no one saw coming, despite it having been lost for years and having been a classic topic within the lost media community. This is something I came across back in the old days of researching Lost Media, so it was quite desired even before now. That topic being the original pilot to the Boondocks. This was a show that aired on Adult Swim in 2005, and lasted for nearly a decade, becoming really popular and really famous within that time. And with that fame came the interest that fans had in the earlier interpretation of the show, that existed a couple years before Adult Swim picked it up. Originally, the Boondocks was pitched to Fox in 2003, who ordered a six-minute pilot of the series based on the original comic strip. But the project didn't go well with Fox, and as stated by series creator Aaron McGruder, it was really hard making the show while having to be so restricted by the standards of broadcast television. After the series was rejected by Fox in 2004, Adult Swim picked it up and it was able to flourish there instead. But that original Fox pilot had never been seen by the public, and for years we only had short clips and screenshots to go off of. 2016 was when it became way more popular, as series producer Carl Jones posted a 21 second clip to X and for the first time, we could see it utilized more of an anime style. This was in that early era of the lost media community like I said before, and how so many people found out about it at the time. According to the Lost Media Wiki article, 
There were claims that it was shown at conventions, but there are no confirmed sightings of these. And if that had really been the case, you'd think there would have been some kind of leaked clips or even discussion about it by now. Essentially, it was one of those topics that you can't really search for since so few people would have it in the first place, and the hope was that one day it would just show up when you least expect it. And that's exactly what happened. February 17th, 2024 saw the full release of this pilot from a totally unknown source in a totally unknown way. It was simply posted to Internet Archive by user Cal Eastwood, but nobody knows who this person is or where they got it from. To this day, the original upload is still there, which nowadays is pretty rare for a pilot or content like this. Usually within a few days of it gaining popularity, the uploader will take it down or someone with the rights will try to strike it, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. Even if this did get taken down, there are still plenty of re-uploads that exist, so I don't think it could ever get lost again. So far for 2024, I would say this topic got the largest reaction and biggest boost online compared to anything else from the year so far. But we're only a few months in, and who knows what else will be found. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.